Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. And happy dog day. If you, I don't know if you can hear, that's my dog scratching the floor. <laughs> um, I think we can all identify. Yeah. yeah, he's just, he decides to scratch the floor every time I'm going to do a live something. So we call him Toby DJ. So DJ mm -hmm. Toby. All yeah. right. So we're going to do um, my How to Draw Your Dog class. It's going to, it's going to be six steps. Very easy. Toby. Toby. Buddy. It's fine. Um, it's going to be six steps. And I'm going to recommend everybody to draw as I explain. So you start drawing um, little sketches once I, like, since I start explaining it. Tell us about your dog. If you have any questions, I can see the Q&A. So you can just ask me directly uh, on the Q&A part. And I will respond. All right, so let's go to a step one. So I think someone is asking, should they use their iPad or pencil or paper? I think either um, one. You can use, yeah, you can use whatever, whatever is easier for you. The first um, five steps are just about sketching the dog. And then the sixth step is about coloring. So um, whatever you feel comfortable with, it, it's going to be fine. Yeah, all right. So uh, my first step is define what kind of face your dog has. So um, when you see your dog, right, um, you're going to see like how big is the distance between the eyes and the nose, like how long is the snout? And that's what that's going to make it fall in some of these categories. So um, the, the kind of faces are four. I separate in between long faces, terror face, hound face and short face. Let's go one by one for you guys to see how to do it. So uh, a long face dog, I want you to imagine um, something like a Erdel Terrier or a Collie that have a very long snout. So the eyes and the nose are very separated in between them. So if your dog has a long face, you're gonna do a letter B and you're gonna do the nose where the lines cross and the eyes in the outside of the, of the line. Did you do this? That will be your first step. Burrito. Oh my God, here really is like intense DJing today. Where are you, buddy? Okay, he left. Okay, um, then we have Terror and Hound face, these two over here. Um, these two faces have the same proportions, uh, it's the same base. And what I mean by that, um, it's you're just going to draw an X, you're going to draw the nose in the middle and then the eyes on the edge of the line. I'm gonna grab my dog, give me a second. He really wants to be part of the show today. Come on, buddy. Okay, it's okay. Go to the bed. Okay. Um, the difference between terror face and hound face um, and why have them as a separate face, it's because the hound face um, usually have this lazy lips like this. Um, the kind of dogs that fell in between those ones is the terror face. I want you to imagine a jerky, um, a westy. Um, most dogs have this, like, this kind of face. Um, Jack Russell and then the hound face. I want you to think about a white runner, uh, maybe a golden, a lab, those have this kind of face. And then lastly, we have short face what is um, the really funny face. We all think it's funny. Um, like a Shih Tzu, a Pug, or a Frenchie. To do this kind of face, we're gonna do a letter X, but with the angle like way open, way more open. And we're gonna do the nose on top of the, where the lines cross, and then we're gonna do the eyes over the line. And then you do this. Any questions so far about the kind of faces? Anybody? If you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna go to my next step. All right, I guess I'm going next step. Um, Step number two is um, define what kind of ears your dog has. And this one, the easiest step, you see your dog, you already know what kind of, dog, what kind of ears they have. 
um, I separated in six kind of kind of ears, and we have uh, up ears, floppy ears, down ears, really down ears, up and down, and then a mix. And the way I draw them is with little triangles. So if my dog has up ears, like my silky terrier or a husky, uh, Shiba Inu, I'm just gonna make a triangle going up. Um, the only thing you need to be um, careful with in with that here is like in the in what angle the triangles go. There's some dogs that have it to the side, and then there's some dogs that have it on the top. Like a husky, most likely has it ver like the triangles go vertical, but then um, a jerky has it going to the side. If that makes sense. Um, then we have floppy ears, also with triangles. When your dog has floppy ears, for example. Pitbulls usually have like those floppy ears, they go to the side. I usually do one triangle going up, one triangle going down. So that way when I finish the drawing, it's gonna have a little bit of movement. Then we have down ears. Um, down ears is just like the classic dog ear that you see in a lab, white runner. I mean, honestly, lots of dogs. Um, to do that kind of ear, imagine the head of your dog is here. You're gonna continue in that little angle and do a triangle that goes down. Obviously it variates depending on how big the ears of your dog are. I'm just doing like genetic shapes for you guys to see. Um, then we have really down ears. These kind of ears, you find them on Chih Tzu's, on some doodle mixes, and then also in Basin Hounds. And I usually do a triangle like this. It's, go, it's going lower than the down ears. It's like very much, following the shape of the circle. And if it was a bass and how probably be longer. Then we have up and down ear. Do you see there's a lot on Jack Russell's? I just imitate the same as the down ears for the triangle and do a little two lines to separate them from the head like this. And then um, mix is just um, to give you guys the freedom that like some dogs have one up ear, one down ear, one up ear, one floppy ear, and they kind of all variate. So that's what I add the mix here. I see a question over here. Chihuahua face, I think I missed it. How about Chihuahua I ended up using the short face? Um, chihuahuas are tricky. I think some Chihuahuas could definitely be short face, but there's some of them that have a very long snout, like they're very skinny and have a long snout. I will use the, uh, the long face too. So like, that's what I mean. You have to see your dog and like really see how their faces are because even between the same breeds, sometimes they are different. But um, I've seen Chihuahuas are short face and Chihuahuas are like very long face. So it depends. So now we're gonna go to our step three. And it's what kind of leaps your dog has. And for this, also very simple step. Um, I want you to see your dog lips, right? Long lips are gonna be the kind of dogs that it doesn't matter what they're doing. You can always see the whole smile on their face. For example, as she um, Pomeranian, very small, very small snout, but you're always able to see a smile complete on his snout. So to draw these kind of dogs, I'm gonna draw Uh, smile. Then we have normal lips. Most dogs have this kind of lips. My dog has this kind of lips. Um, it's the dogs that you cannot really see a whole smile. You basically just see a little line. Then we have lazy lips. We talk about this a little bit in the beginning, but um, almost all big dogs, warm runner, laps, uh, goldens, sometimes pit bulls, they all have these lips. And what, um, what I mean with lazy lips is the upper lip is just um, way bigger than the under lip. So it kind of just flops around. And to do that, we're gonna do a little line. And after that, take the lip and then the lower lip will be here. And then lastly, we have sad lips. Um, I call it sad lips, not because they are, these dogs are sad or anything, it's just the name, because when they got the mouth closed, it kind of looks a little bit sad. So to do this, um, 
I usually do a very short line between the nose and the lip, and then do an inverted triangle going down. And these lips, you can find it on Shih Tzu's, you can find it on Griffon's, you can find it on um, some Frenchies if I finish it, you can find it on Pox. And they usually have short face when they have these lips, like that. Any questions so far? We got kind of face, kind of ears, kind of lips. Any question, everybody? Yeah, it looks like um, someone was asking about a King Charles Cavalier. Um, I don't know whether they're asking what kind of face or ears. Oh, I see. Um, King, King Charles Cavalier is a short face dog. Yeah, I think they usually have the short face and maybe some floppy ears. The, the ears go like very down like that. And kind of some sad lips sometimes. Yes. There he goes. Something like that. So far. I love King Charles. All right, let's go to number four. Um, this thing's start getting a little bit more interesting and this. What kind of body your dog has? And we have, I separated in four kind of bodies. We have athletic body, normal body, long body, and muscular body. Uh, athletic body, I want you to think about a dog that looks like he runs a marathon. A bisla, a wine runner, a pointer, sometimes um, some standard poodles. They all look like they just like are so fast and so athletic. Also some chihuahuas also get this body. Um, then we have normal body, just, um, they just look like a normal little dog, a lot of doodles, Yorkies, a lot of terriers, most terriers have this body, um, but also a lap will have this body. Um, then we have long body, long body um, is the same as the normal body, but we're going to make it just longer, and we're going to explain how to make them after I talked of all of them. And then lastly, we have muscular body, and it's those dogs that look like they have gone to the gym and do a lot of weight, like a um, pit bull, maybe a Frenchie, maybe a bulldog will have this kind of body. So now let's start drawing them. To do the athletic body, if your dog has an athletic body, you're gonna do a big circle for the chest and a tiny circle for the hips. In both positions, it works the same. Um, then what you're going to do is uh, take out each path from each side of the circle. So I can do this. And then I'm going to do top with top and the under part with the other part of the circle. And there it is, athletic body. And you're going to do the same when they're sitting. Each part comes out of each side of the circle. And then bottom with bottom and then top with top. There it goes. To do the normal body, you're gonna make a cir circles the same size between chest and hips for each position. Position. So circles are about the same size. They don't have really like a athletic feature or anything. It's just the same size. Um, we're gonna do top with top, bottom with bottom for the both positions and then take out the pass from each side of the circle. Just like this. Uh, then we have long body. And for this, we're gonna, most likely the long body has the same side of a circle between chest and hips. Uh, some dachshunds, um, also some corgis will have a little bit of a bigger chest than the hips, but it's like not as different as the athletic body and it's more separated. How far down the circle from the pup's head? Okay, let's do this just to show you. So you have a V. Kind of like, depending on how big the chest of your dog is, kind of like when the V of the X finish, you're gonna do the circle right here. Sometimes the chest can be a little bit bigger than the head, but most of the time it's the same, same size. 
like this. Okay, so yes, just a little bit lower than the X. Um, okay, um, to sit along body will be the same. You're gonna do a circle for the chest, almost the same size circle for the hips. And let's take out those paths for each side of the circle. Short pass, that's what makes them long, top with top, bottom with bottom. And to sit them down, we're gonna do the same. Um, just a recommendation, most long body dogs, they take out the leg under, so you can do that little effect of like the leg coming down of the body, okay? And then for the muscular body, we're also gonna do a big circle for the chest and a small circle for the hips, but not that small. So not as small as the athletic body, it's gonna be just a little bit smaller. And what we're gonna do um, to trick it into look muscular is the pass, although they come from the side of the circle, they kind of do that curve when they come in. Up with top, bottom with bottom, pack comes out, there it goes. Um, any questions about kind of bodies? So far. Yes, no, yes, no. So far, so good, I think. All right. Oh, someone said, can you do the sitting down legs again, please? Sitting down legs again. On which kind of body? Um, Athletic. Okay. So let's do it here for you to see it. It's going to be a big circle for the chest, small circle for the hips. And then I'm going to this pass coming out each side of the circle. And then on top of the circle here, you can take out your paw. And then the back paw that we're not really seeing that well. We're just gonna copy what this one's doing. Then if I take out the circles, it looks like this. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to step five, and this is where you actually give your dog some shape. Um, and it's how to do the hair. So we have three different kind of hairs. We have short hair, medium hair, or long hair. Short hair, I usually go over my skeleton just with a straight line that you're like you're seeing here. Sometimes I will add a little bit of texture in some areas, like I would do something like this. So I basically go over just like that. Um, I also like to add little hairs inside just to make sure it looks like they have some movement. And then besides that, um, you can add lines on the face to separate it, like to separate the snout and like maybe add so much, um, a little bit more personality to your dog. Um, then we have medium hair. Um, medium hair, it, I just want you to imagine like a um, jerky or a Shih Tzu that got groomed and they have, they look fluffy, but they don't really have like a long hair. So to do that, I go over my skeleton with, this texture. Um, it might be a little bit less noticeable like on the paws or maybe on the neck, but most of the body will have this texture. And then lastly, we have long hair. And long hair, I divide it in between three other categories. And it's straight hair that goes down like a jerky. Then we have um, curly hair, just like a poodle or doodle mix. And then lastly, we have this one that I haven't figured out a name yet. So far, I just call it Pomeranian hair, but um, Pomeranians, Chelties, Aussies, they will have like a mane. So that's what I mean. They, they don't necessarily have long hair on their faces, but they have like a whole mane that covers it up. Um, so that's that one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw a little skeleton and I'm gonna go over with all the kind of hairs for you guys to see how different they look. Um, and then after that, we're gonna do some coloring. So, so far on my page, 
I have something like this. And that's the missing ears. I'm gonna have ears, and that's it. Now I can start drawing. So this is my skeleton. Now I'm gonna start drawing. And I'm gonna draw the first version of this dog. I'm gonna draw it with um, short hair. Let me do the past and everything for you guys to see. Okay. So, so far that's what I have. And now I'm gonna start drawing the hair. If this dog was short hair, this is how we will look. And then if I take the skeleton out, he will look something like this. All right. Now I am gonna go and put him over here and I'm gonna use the same skeleton, but instead of doing um, short hair, I'm gonna do medium hair. So with the same skeleton now, I'll go over with medium hair. Then the tail can be a little bit more fluffy. Then if I take out the skeleton, this is what I have. Uh, again, you can also add on little details like this. And so movement, so it already looks like my dog Toby. And there he goes. So I'm gonna have him sit over here. And I'm gonna go next. If this dog had long straight down hair. So if you're doing long straight hair, you're just gonna do lines going down instead of actually just doing um, the border, you're gonna just do lines going down all over the little skeleton. Like this. And the tail most likely will open up like that. And here it goes. This is how he looks. Now I'm going to use the same skeleton and I'm going to do curly hair. Any questions so far, guys? I think we're good. Nice. It's gonna look like a little cheap with those open ears, but I basically always go all over the body with the same kind of curly texture. And I also like to add on curly hairs on the inside. Like that. And then lastly, we're gonna add a little mane to our dog. And that's gonna be our last guy right here. All right, so when your dog has a mane, sometimes the mane will cover up the ears and sometimes the ears are gonna show up. In this case, because the ears are big, they're gonna show up part of the, the mane. But it really depends on how your dog looks, if you have like a Pomeranian or a Papa one or something like that. Then the mane most likely will cover up the chest or like a little bit lower than the chest. 
and then the past will show up with short hair as well as the back most likely is just a little bit like either medium or short hair but not really long hair so all the hair is just in the mane after i do that i would like to separate the little face to make sure people understand like here's the face and then the rest is all the hair so here it is this is how they look any questions so far if not we can go to coloring i think we're ready okay um, I have a list here of different coloring tips that um, I use with basically um, anything that I'm, that I'm with any um, material that I'm using. So I always start with it with the lightest color. So if you're drawing um, a Cavalier Spaniel, you're going to do the white. And then after that, you're going to do the spots if it's like the red and white one, for example. Um, if your dog is a brindle color, start with the white, then with the mustard, and then just put the dark color. And, and this kind of dog, just try to do it a little bit messy and spot it so you can see the three colors at the end. Uh, really white dogs, you're gonna use gray shadows. And then off white dogs, like the ones that you see that are white but are a little bit tan also, you're gonna use light tan for the shadows. And then for black dogs, you are gonna use layers of gray until you get the darkness that you want. And now I'm gonna show you how I do um, one of each of them. So you guys can, can see how I do it. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys if you wanna see it on the iPad or if you guys wanna see watercolors. Either way works for me. I just wanna know what you guys wanna see. Um, I think on the iPad is fine. I think most no. people are using probably, oh, someone said watercolor. I will definitely, oh, we have, we have votes for both, so. Watercolors, I bet watercolors. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna wait one more about the size. Oh my God, they're all there. <laughs> it's very evenly split. Yes, very evenly. And we have a vote for both. <laughs> Love that. All right. We do have our iPad set up already, so, um, I mean, I have all the stuff here, but I guess we can do iPad. Some people want to see it. Um, say it's the same principle for watercolor, so it's not as much different. But I am going to start here on the iPad. So the way I would do it, right, is I will draw my dog on a pencil. Let's do um, what you guys wanted to see first, a white dog. Do a white dog, and this white dog will be a Westie because I love terrors. And Westies are usually very white, so they're going. I'm going to use yours and of um, a light gray to do the, to do the shadows. So this is a little Westy. This is what you should have on your paper before you start um, doing color, just the line work of the, just the line work of the, of the dog. And then if I start doing my coloring, right, I'm gonna use white, um, in this case, light gray, so you guys can see it directly. And let me, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use the watercolor brush so we can satisfy both people. <laughs> oh, with the painting. So I'll go over my paper with, with a layer of white that looks a little bit grayish. Um, just to make it noticeable on the paper. After I do that, I'm going to grab a little bit of a darker gray and I'm going to add it just, um, I'm going to add it just where I think he will have shadows. So under the belly, 
on top of the nose, maybe on the ears. Uh, if you're using watercolors, should you do use ink first? No, you're gonna use a watercolor and then after it's dry, you're gonna add on the ink. And that's what I'm doing it here this way so you guys can see the whole process. So after my dog's done, I'm gonna go over like if it was ink. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna add just the little shadows where I think it needs it. And then I'm gonna probably just blend it a little bit better with my brush if it was watercolor and then with the smudge tool if you are using an iPad. If you are using an iPad, you can also tweak it a little bit and add on more white if you need, like I'm doing right now. If you're using watercolor, I will go very light until I find the shade I like. After the coloring is done, it's like this. After the coloring is done, then I'm gonna go over with ink with the little lines. Oops, I will be, I will be using something like this. Then if I don't have this, this is how my dog will look like at the end. And I will add on some little hairs. So he has some movement, personality, and this is how it will look like. Um, now I'm gonna do a two color dog. And since somebody mentioned they have a cavalier, I'm gonna do a cavalier. So in pencil, I should have something that looks like this. Right, I'm gonna have something that looks like that on pencil. Now I'm gonna go over with my watercolors. Painting, painting, painting. I'll go over with um, white all over. If it's a white cavalier, I mean, the lighter color of the dog that you are drawing. This is a spotted dog. So I'm going over with white. I'm gonna add on the little shadows that I talked about when I did the Westies. Blend them a little bit. And then I'm gonna add the spots. This cavalier is my from this color. This kind of have. We had a question about a merle coat too. Um, uh, yes, we're going to do, okay. okay. Yes. I'm going to do a brindle one. I don't know if that will. Yeah, I think I was going to ask too. Uh, my dog has kind of these little like spots yes. on us. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how to, how to color those. Okay. In. Well, we can do, we can do an Aussie. So you guys. Perfect. Merle Aussie. So you oh, guys Merle can. Aussie, yeah. So then after I do my spots, then I'm ready to start passing with the ink. The ink you're just gonna put in the lines that you are gonna keep. So I'm not keeping that line in the middle. So I don't need it, just the ears, pass. And if I take out this, this is how my dog will look like. Add on the hairs, the eyes, the toes. Somebody asked, um, we'll get recording after of the webinar. I think it is getting recorded, so 
Most yeah, likely. it's getting recorded. I think sometimes we um, will upload them to like our YouTube channel. Um, and we always send out an email after the event as well. So we'll include any information about how to access the recording in that email. When do you, uh, when you do a golden retriever, do you do the many Wispy they have? What's Wispy? My English, English is not my first language, so I don't understand that word. I think um, what they mean is it's somewhere in between like a short coat and a long coat. And they have just very fluffy, silky hair with some kind of whiskery parts sticking out. Um, yeah. So you would do, if you're doing a golden retriever, you would do like the mane that goes out. Like this is kind of how they look like. You want to do like a mane that covers out um, part of the paws. And then kind of like a medium hair going down. Kind of like this. Something like that. Uh, okay, let's let's try it out with the merle coats for you guys to see instead of the brindle, although it's kind of the same process to do it. So. I'm gonna draw my Aussie over here. Most most of the time they're long faced dogs. This one's pretty short, but that's fine. And we want to do it like up up ears. Or, do I use it like that? I have to Google that Aussie picture to see them. <laughs> And it's like a mane. And then they kind of look something like this. Okay, that's good. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go over with white. Where's my painting? Here, I'm going to go over with white all over the body. And if I'm doing layering, like if I'm layering colors, this way, I want to go messy. I want to have all the shadows I can because these dogs usually have a bunch of colors, not just three colors. It's like a lot of different shadows on it. So I like to go messy and spot it like that. You guys can see it. Um, after that, then depending where your dog has the spots and the color, I will go over again, just very spotted and messy around the body. I'm gonna add on the tan. Like some tan coming out like this. So even when I'm doing it with brush, I also um, do it like this, like very much like spot it all around instead of actually making it um, perfect, just because I wanted to have all those shadows. And then I'm gonna add, the last thing you're gonna add is just the darkest shadows. Use a smaller brush to add on little dots all over. Just like that. And then after um, your coloring is done, you can go over with the ink if you want to. But yeah, basically you go from the lightest to the darkest, just very messy doing spots. And then the last step is adding the dark spot. If I take out the background line, this is kind of how my Aussie looks like. And then lastly, we're gonna do the black dog. And I saw somebody ask for a black Pomeranian, so we can do that. So if we're doing a black Pomeranian, we're gonna have our first line. Tail that goes up the path. This path might be too long for him. Okay. 
So here's my Pomeranian. And if he is black, what we are gonna do is go over the body with different layers of gray until you find the color that you like. So where's my painting? So I'm gonna use a gray color and I'm gonna go over the body. The first layer, I'm gonna cover up the whole body. So if I had a brush, this is what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna go again with a second layer. Oops. And you can decide if you wanna have it all around the face, or if you already are seeing a little bit darker, you can just put it where, um, have it where the shadows are. You don't want it to be too dark or else you're gonna miss out the details. I'm gonna go another layer. This layer, I'm gonna have it all around, but in the snout because it's gonna have a little bit of a wider snout. And then I'm gonna go with a little bit of a darker color just to create shadows under the mane, the belly, and the paws, just like that. Maybe on top of the head. And then I will blend it. So this is already um, very dark for me. Like I think this is dark enough that I can start using my ink to finish the details. So that's what I will do next. There it goes. Hope all your dogs guys are getting spoiled today. This is dog day. So here you have it. On paper, do you want to each layer dry? So I will wait until it's almost dry, but not fully dry so I can still blend the colors together. And then I wait it to dry completely before I add the ink. Any other question? Anything else you guys want to know about this? Um, any breed in particular that you guys want to see how I do? Could be also good. So I think someone asked earlier about a pug. You're welcome, Maria. Uh, a pug. So Puck will be a short face, um, a short face dog. Big eyes, right? They always have like this big eyes. And then they're gonna have the sad lips, but you're gonna complete it, complete this now. So little ears going down and then the wrinkles. Um, Usually their bodies are pretty muscular, like this. And then the tail goes up like that. And then to color it, and we'll just go over with the tan all over the body. And then um, I'm not gonna draw it complete, but just for you guys to see kind of what I mean. You will use the time for all the body and then you want to add on the dark gray areas and then blend it out with the tan. Um, as well as the black dog, I would just go um, lighter instead of darker, just go light. And then 
another layer, another layer until you get the color you want because you don't want to go too dark and then you cannot see the little details. Um, but yeah, this is kind of how it will look like. And then the golden retriever, somebody ask. Um, these have like a normal face, sometimes a little bit longer than normal here. Place the lips, down ears, and then you add like all that median hair. Oops, gotta make it smaller. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Mm, looking for another picture of a golden retriever so I can actually get it right. So yeah, I will start the mane like over the mouth like this. And then from the mane, I will take out the bus. Medium hair going down. And then long tail like this. And then um, as well as the white dog, and the black dog, I will just go over with um, different layers of tan, starting very light and then getting it darker at the end, like this. And as the merle, the merle dog, I would like when I'm using, when I'm doing like color dogs, I like to make it very messy because dogs have a lot of shadows on their hair. And it doesn't have to be like a solid one color. You kind of wanted it to be a little bit messy. So you have different textures and colors there. And you can go a little bit darker in some areas or even a little bit dark, lighter in some areas. If you're using watch or acrylics, you can go lighter on the dark. If you're using watercolors, I would just go fully light color and then start getting darker. That. Hey, Andrea, any chance we can get tips of drawing a sausage dog? Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, just um, the long body, they have long face and long body. So a sausage dog will be a long face. And then a long body like that. So the face is gonna be a V and then the body will be um, sometimes a little bit bigger chest and then smaller hips. How do you introduce color or, a, or the cute outfits? So uh, that really depends of, like that's another whole class, but uh, it really depends of like the dog and like how the hair of the dog behaves, like when you put something on it. Like if I put a collar on this um, Merle OC, most likely I'm gonna be able to see just a little bit of, a little bit of color and then hair will be covering it. But in the pock, the other hand, I can see the color almost all around, most likely this now will cover it up a little bit. And then same for the golden retriever, you most likely are able to just see a little bit and then the rest is going up for hair. Pomeranian, do you want to see anything? So if you put a share on the Pomeranian, maybe it could be, it could be what you put on it. So even if you put a bandana on him, most likely this hair will come out like that. You kind of cover it up. 
Um, but yes, any other question, guys? We have um, nine minutes left, so I can respond to some other questions over there. Um, Andrea, you uh, also do custom pet portraits on your site, correct? I do, yeah, I do uh, pet portraits, family portraits, and a lot of custom products for pet parents. If you guys haven't seen them, it's a lot of fun. They're super cute. Thank you. Awesome. Um, well, if we don't have any more questions, we can wrap up a few minutes early. And like we talked about earlier, um, we will send out, oh, someone said a quick pit bull hint. Can you give a quick pit bull hint? So um, pit bull, as I said at the beginning, they um, usually have this face like this, floppy ears, and then a big chest and the curly paws. So they look like they went to the gym. And then if you want to make them standing up, this is kind of how they will look like. And if you are going to make them sitting down, then I will do this and then most likely take a paw down here. Like that. All right, I hope that's good for the pit bull hand. So cute. Uh, thank you so much, Veronica. Yeah, so if you guys um, haven't seen my work, you can check it out on Instagram at this account, Andre Caceres G. And I hope all your dogs are being very spoiled today and I hope all of them get portraits done. And I don't know, some eggs or something like that, delicious for a dog state. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, so yeah, we'll send out an email with um, just recapping uh, the event. And if you guys have any questions about um, WAGMO, you can always respond to that email or just reach out to us on our website and we're happy to help. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for joining us, everybody. And thanks, Andrea, again. Yeah, thank you, bye. All right. Bye, guys.